Welcome to part four of the Godot 101 Intro to 3D series. In the previous part, we made a kinematic character that we could control using the mouse and the keyboard. And in this installment, we're going to make a few different objects that this uh, character can interact with. This time, we're going to look at 3D area nodes. Now, areas are used for two main purposes. Detection, meaning they detect when bodies or other areas overlap and influence, which means they can alter the physics in a certain area, change gravity, change friction, things like that. So we're going to use area to create three different types of objects in our scene. A coin that the character can pick up, a bullet that the character can shoot, and spikes that will do damage if you run into them. Before we start making the objects, let's go into the project settings and we're going to set up some physics layers. So in Layer names, 3D physics. Let's name the first layer environment. That's going to contain our ground and the platforms and things like that. Layer two, we're going to call player. And layer three, we're going to call pickups. What this will do is make it a lot easier for us to organize which objects can interact with other objects. So a pickup, for example, should detect when the player touches it but it shouldn't care about the environment. The ground isn't going to pick up the coin. So let's close that and let's open up our character scene and let's make sure that the layers for this are set to, if we click the little dot dot here you can see, let's make sure the player is in the player layer and for its mask environment because we want to make sure that it still keeps seeing the environment. So let's start by making the coin. We're going to go into our assets and find the coin gold model, and we're going to make a new inherited scene. And I'm going to take the scene root and right click on it and choose change type so I can make this an area. And while I'm there, let's rename that to coin gold. And in the collision, we're going to set it to the layer we want it on is the pickups layer, and the mask that we want is player. We don't want it to check the environment. All right, now we need to make a collision shape. Before we do that, you'll notice that the way that this scene happens to be set up, the way it was exported in the art pack, the coin itself, the coin mesh itself is offset. So I'm going to change that to 0, 0, 0 in the translation. So now it's centered on the origin and we're going to add a collision shape. So just add collision shape and this the shape that we will probably want to use is cylinder. So there's a cylinder right? and if we change that cylinder uh, by rotating it 90 degrees, let's go into the transform and rotate it if you see the orientation here, we want to rotate around this axis, which is the Z. So we're going to rotate around Z by 90 degrees. And then you can just scale it down so that it fits the shape of the coin. About like that. Maybe a little wider. There we go. So now we have our coin ready to go. Save that. Now all we want this coin to do is disappear if the player runs into it, so it looks like they picked it up. So if we add a script to the coin, all we want to do is click on area and connect its body entered signal. Connect that body entered signal and we already know because we set the collision layers that the only body that it's going to detect is one that's on the player layer and that's all we care about. So let's just add Q free there. So if any body is detected entering the shape, we're going to delete the coin. And that should do it. So let's jump over to our to our scene and we can throw a couple of these coins in here or even one to start with. So let's just grab a coin, throw that in there and we'll put it right there on the platform. And we'll run. Let 
run up there and poof the coin is gone all right one other thing I want to do to this coin is I clicked on the mesh and I made it a little bit bigger because I thought it was a little on the small side so I scaled it up by 20 percent 1.2 and then I made the collision shape just a little bit bigger too to match and the other thing is the coins are kind of boring just sitting there not moving so we're going to add an animation player so that we can make them spin so I'm going to add a new animation call it spin it's one second long we're going to make sure we're at the start of the track here and we're going to grab the coins rotation degrees create a track for that then go all the way to the end and we're going to set it to 180 rotating around Y and since since the coin is symmetrical we don't have to rotate a full 360 we can ro rotate 180 keyframe that set it to loop and hit play now we have our coin spinning set this to autoplay and we should be good to go come back over to our world where I've spawned a few more of them And there we go, nice spinning coins for us to go and collect. Okay, for this next part, I've made another new area node, and this is going to be our bullet. For the mesh instance, this time I used a capsule shape. I went ahead and made it. Just set the radius to 0.1 and the height to 0.3, and then that'll give us a good size for what our character will be shooting. And you can make a collision shape that's also a capsule shape that matches the exact same dimensions. And I also went and just put a little uh, material on there to make the bullet look like I'm firing a red laser beam or something. And then I've also added a timer. The timer is going to be for the bullet's lifetime so that we can make the bullets disappear after a certain amount of time. And I've set the one shot and the auto start on. All right. And we're going to add a script to this bullet. And what this is going to do is have a speed variable. We're going to set that to 15. And of course, its velocity is going to be some vector 3. And then we're going to make a start function. And the start function, we're going to pass it a transform. Usually, this will probably be the transform of the player. So transform, set the transform of the bullet itself equal to that transform that got passed in, and set the velocity equal to the forward vector, which is transform.basis.z, times the speed. And then process is just going to move this area. So we take our origin of our transform, and we add velocity times delta and then finally we need to connect the timers timeout signal and if that happens we're gonna delete the bullet and also we want to say if the bullet contacts something we're gonna have it disappear like for example the only things we really have in our world right now are the platforms but if it it's one of those static bodies so we're gonna say body entered on the bullet we're gonna connect to that and just for now let's just say if body is static body Q free so that's the code for our bullet itself now we need to make the player spawn these when we press shoot Okay, here we are at our player scene, and I'm going to add a position 3D. And what this does is it allows us to mark the position where we want our bullets to spawn. And I'm going to have them come out of the end of the triangle here. And you can you could even orient it so that they go up or down or something like that. But that's going to be the spot where the bullet is going to appear. So save that and then in the code that's the that's how we're going to find the transform for what we pass to the bullet. 
So first we need to load the bullet up here. So, so we're going to load the bullet scene, which if you want a shortcut to typing paths, you can always go over here and grab bullet scene and just drag it there and it will drop the path in there for you. So we're going to use the left mouse button. So let's go to project settings and in our input map, we're going to add a shoot action and we're going to attach the mouse button, left button. Then we can go down to our unhandled input here and we can add if event is uh, action pressed shoot. So if we press that shoot button, then we're going to spawn a new bullet, an instance of the bullet. We're going to call it start method. Make some blank room here. Using the position 3D global transform. So we want to use the transform of that so it will automatically be pointing in the same direction that the player is. And then we're going to just add this to the parent scene. And normally I would get a little bit more flexible with this, but for this demo, we can just add this to the parent. So let's go over to our scene and run it again. All right, one more area object for us to make, the spikes. So I've instanced the spikes object, turned it into an area, and added a collision shape by using create convex collision sibling. So you can see it made a collision shape there so we can tell when our player touches this object. And so this object is just going to detect whether something ran into it. So let's create a script and we're going to connect the body entered signal. And when the body entered signal is triggered, we want to, if body has method take damage, then we're going to sit, tell the body to take damage. And now we can go over to our character and define what that means. So I'm going to add a... Now, we want a little bit of a response, something to happen to the player when they step on the spikes. I want them to bounce away from it. And in order to do that, if we're holding down the movement key, we try and bounce away, we're going to move right back into it. So we're going to add a can move variable that will just be a flag for us to disable movement for a brief amount of time while actually just start with it true while the player is executing that hurt um, movement and then they can start moving again on their own so can move is true and our take damage function we'll add that down here at the end and what that means is I want the velocity to be reversed which means you're gonna fly backwards. But specifically, I want the velocity.y to equal the jump speed. So it's also gonna, so it's gonna push us backwards, but also upwards. And then we're gonna set can move equal to false. So now we will no longer be able to uh, process input. We're going to do this for a short amount of time. So we're gonna use the uh, get tree create timer method to give us a one-off timer that lasts for one second. And when that's done, we'll set can move back to true again. And then to have that can move take effect, we just have to go up here to get input. And at the beginning, we're, set, we're just going to say if can move is false, we will return and we won't, won't process any input. 
So that is it. We just need to stick one of those spikes onto our level and try it out. So let's put this up here in the corner. Yeah, about right there. All right, let's see what happens when we go and run into those spikes. Oh, see how I'm knocked backwards? Now go sideways into it, uh, right? Makes me fly away. And we can adjust the amount that it kicks you outwards. You could adjust all that kind of stuff. But now we get at least an effect of something happening when we run into those. I hope this was helpful for you. Please leave your questions in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.